Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Firstly, I would like to thank everyone who has subscribed uh, in the last few months. I haven't been on the channel with a new video for two months and I'm aware of that, but I haven't created this YouTube channel as a revenue generator. It is a means of sharing my experience of more than four decades of using Olympus photographic equipment. And there's another reason why I haven't been making videos as often as other content creators do. My primary purpose and daily existence depends on me serving the needs of my clients. I'm very fortunate in the current world economy to be a multimedia imaging professional that is busy very much just about every day and I have been for every day of the first three months of this year. I've got a bit of a gap now of two days and then so I thought I'd just pop this video in so no one thinks I've just given up on the whole idea and have disappeared. Secondly, I want to tackle something which has come up often on the internet and it's a myth and I say it a myth because I personally haven't discovered this and many other people whom I have trained both in my studio and at the photo academy where I lecture on a regular basis. Um, it's about menus and camera control menus of cameras in particular of Olympus. Many well-regarded review sites constantly trip on this. Oh, the Olympus menus are not intuitive. They're even people who are former brand ambassadors um, of the brand who say that the company must now change these menus to make them more intuitive and more user-friendly. Well, the thing is, is that they're not completely uh, complicated. They're not less intuitive than any of the other cameras I encounter on a daily basis at the Photo Academy. For instance, we have the same number of tabs um, up until a little while ago as Canon do. Now Canon have more tabs on their menu. So is the, how come the Olympus one on its own is more complicated than others and not intuitive? If you understand the logic of how they set out, it's probably much easier to make friends with the camera. Now to assist new students um, and those who are coming into my studio using the equipment we do, because many of them will have been schooled on Canon or Nikon, the two usual suspects. Sony is not that big in our country yet, but it is gaining inroads. Um, I've written menu booklets, which set out the structure and the logic behind the menus and what each menu function is for and how you would set it, as well as the default settings that we use in our studio. I will place links in the description below to these booklets. There's for the EM1, Mark 1, the 2, the 3, and the EM1X. You are welcome to download those. They're free of charge. Absolutely, if you find use in them, then I'll be very pleased to, to know about that. Um, if you have any suggestions for future editions of the booklets, I'll also take comments or emails on that. But the Olympus menu system is not difficult, as I've said before. It is logically laid out. You will find that the tabs on the left-hand side of the screen, you will have two tabs for camera. And those will tell you exactly how you can set various options on the camera. They are how to control the camera and, and make do your bidding photographically. Then on cameras from the EM Mark II upwards, the Mark III and the M1X, there's a separate video menu. On the EM Mark V Mark III, there's also a separate video menu. And those are settings you would adjust if you're using the camera to make videos. Then you have a playback menu, which is denoted by the playback symbol. And once you've taken the picture, then you can go there to do things to the photograph you've taken. They also affect how the playback is shown on the screen, whether you see one image or you see four, nine, 10, 25, as you please. Then you have the custom settings menu, which is commonly known as the gears menu in Olympus shorthand. And that menu consists of a whole lot of sub menus, A down to J on various cameras, even further than that. G, H and I on Mark IIs and Mark Threes. Now on those menus, the logic of the layout is as follows. If you are wanting to change a button function, the first letter of the English word button is B, you go to the B menu and then go across and find the tab. If you want to change a function, it'll be a function, then you can go into the button functions and change that. If you're wanting to change something to do with flash, for instance, you want to go to first curtain sync or you want to change the power, um, or various other settings to do with flash, then you would go to the first letter of the English word, which is F for flash. These are the way the English menus are laid out and the way that makes sense for me. And in the flash menu, you will find settings that allow you to control the flash. For instance, if you're wanting to change things to do with the setting of the picture size, the file size. Now, if we go back to the film days, we used to speak a lot about grain and grain would affect potentially the mood of the photograph and also the sharpness of the detail you could capture. Now likewise when you're setting pixel size and DPI size on your camera that will have a similar result. So 
your granularity, if you want to put it that way, is under the G menu. And the G menu allows you to set settings which control the image size and the file type and so on. If you go through these booklets, which I'll link to, as I've said before, you will find the logic behind this and what each setting is for. Also, the default settings we use. Bear in mind, these booklets were primarily written for our staff so that we can get new staff members schooled in the equipment as soon as possible and rapidly get them out to do work without tripping over the camera settings. Canon have a similar setup, but instead of running their tabs down, they run their tabs across the page. The final one on the Olympus menu is the settings menu, where you would set the core settings like the date, the time, the language. And speaking of the language, if you are English speaking, um, some of our assistants have an interesting sense of humor, I'm trying to put one over the boss sometimes. They'll hand the camera back to me, set to Chinese or Russian or whatever. Um, and if you are handed a camera like that, um, it's not a problem. I just go to the menu. I look for the little man on the final tab, the speech bubble, and English is in the top left hand corner. And that joke tends to fall flat at that point, but um, good on them for trying. It's always fun to have people with a bit of initiative and a sense of fun. So if you use Olympus cameras, I would urge you to not be too influenced by what people say on the web. Um, even those who are former influencers are saying that something that needs to be changed, I can't agree, because one of the key things when you're out an assignment is not having to rethink about a new menu layout. And if you know where things are and they've been the same for a long time, it helps you to achieve what you purchased the camera for, and that is to deliver the result your client needs. There's always a goal and a purpose to picking up a camera, or at least there should be in my view. And if you can satisfy that goal and you can do it quickly without having to RTFM, um, and if you don't know what RTFM is, I will um, just pop it up on the screen and you can go and use your favorite search engine to find what that is. But in this all to summarize it, I think what we need to do is bear in mind the words which were written. And these are on the front page of every set of lecture notes that I hand out at the photo academy where I train by the man who is the father of the Olympus camera system, generally known as that, the camera designer Yoshi Hishimaitani. This is what he said. A photographer's duty is to improve and increase his or her techniques. For knowledge of technique is the only tool for ensuring that the camera may be used to its maximum capability. So many photographers overestimate the functions and features of the camera by themselves. But I'm afraid that a cook who purchases the best knives available has no guarantee of producing excellent dishes. And I think there's a great lesson in that. Often we get too tied up with the knives and the pots and the pans, and we don't understand or keep in mind that the goal is to produce a meal. When photography, the goal is to produce an image or a video which suits the brief, which is the purpose for which the client called you. The client is not interested in what the camera is, they're not interested in what the menus are, they're not interested in where, how many megapixels you've got. If the picture delivers on the brief and fits the purpose for which you were called, then it's a great photograph and you've used your equipment to the best of its ability to suit that particular purpose. And that's really what I think we need to do. We need to maybe stop getting hung up on features and megapixels and all these other things and use what we have to the best of its ability. Because even we in our daily work don't use every feature of every camera to its maximum potential. We have a particular set of requirements for a particular assignment. We set the camera according to that and then we make sure that we control all the other variables as best as we can and we use the equipment to the best of its potential. I hope that the booklets I link are going to be useful to help you understand your Olympus camera and I hope that you'll be able to then go forward and use your camera more and more and reach more of its potential because these cameras are incredible. They are amazing photographic tools. The things that we can do with these cameras now were beyond our wildest dreams as professional photographers even 25 years ago, um, possibly even 10 years ago. I mean, Pro Capture on the M1 Mark II was something that, you know, um, had you mentioned it at a camera club meeting for enthusiastic birding photographers, they would have just like drooled at the prospect and thought, you come from the future and you're Buck Rogers or something like that. Once again, showing my age, if you don't know who Buck Rogers is, use your favorite search engine to find out. Anyway, as I said, I hope this has all been useful and that you find the booklets useful. And uh, it remains for me to be said, thank you for watching, thank you for your support, and enjoy your cameras.